Good morning and welcome. How's everybody today? Good, good. If I was any better, I'd need a twin to share it with. It's not, it's not drugs, it's too much coffee this morning, so bear with me. Um, I am Jerry Shoulder. I'm on the vestry, and I am the property manager, or liaison, as some would say, um, for the uh, buildings and, and grounds. Uh, as a, I, I like to refer to me as a property manager. Um, well, welcome to all here today and those at home on Zoom, and a special welcome to all our, that are here for the first time. We hope you will join us at Connections after the service and uh, fill out the info, information card in front of you. Now, under property and grounds, we have a, a, a certain number of things. One is a, called a Creation Care Center. And Susan Bowes and Elizabeth Shoulder are part of that, and they also are part of the rain garden. And so if you don't know about that, you can talk to them on that subject. Um, as far as um, property and uh, grounds, um, I'm fortunate to have a great deal of volunteers and support that help out in terms of taking up, care of the various things required uh, day to day. Uh, Gail Turner, Ron Cox, Bill Smith, and David Lehman, and of course the foundation have been a great help and uh, at some point feel free to ask how you can help as well because I'm sure there's something that you could do uh, young or old or whatever, um, that we could find something that you could help with. Um, a special thanks, of course, to Bill Smith for those flowers outside. They're wonderful, and he's not done yet. Yeah. Yeah, yep. And um, uh, there's a meeting for the, um, the Creation Care people on August 2nd at 10.30 a.m. So if you're interested in being involved in the grounds and uh, helping with the rain garden, that sort of thing. Uh, suggestions, concerns, information that you uh, require are always welcome. Feel free to come to me or one of the other people that I mentioned in their particular ish, um, areas. Um, I also want to thank everyone out there that are volunteers and supporters of, of the uh, Church of Holy Comforter, and it, it just makes it a great place to be. Thank you very much. Oh, one last thing, uh, the most important. For the new people and even the uh, person that people have been here, the bathrooms are this way, and as you go through the doors, just jog left real quick and you'll be there, so to speak. Okay, thank you very much. And good morning. I'm Susan Bowes, Social Justice and Outreach, and inviting everyone to the National Night Out August 1st on our in our lovely gardens in the back so we need a few things we need a few people at 5 30 to help set up tables as well as uh that's the main thing right now maybe some flyer distribution watch your e-news on friday we'll have a little more information good morning everyone it's great to see you today. Welcome, welcome. A couple announcements from me. In your bulletin, you will see the Shrinemont information on the insert. The way Shrinemont works, we're supposed to give them a head count really soon, <laughs> like in the next few weeks, for October, believe it or not, um, by the end of August, I guess. Yeah. Um, it'd be great if you know already that you'd like to come, if you would sign up using the links that have been sent out, and if you're not getting those links, let me know. Also, um, Jim Bennett and I are doing the program together, so there's a draw, there's a draw. Jim and I are working on the theme of God's creation, one of the hymns he picked for today. He's on vacation, by the way, and welcome, Kim. Thanks for being here, Kim Fox. Um, one of the hymns he picked with that in mind for, for today. Uh, so we're going to have a really great time at Shrinemont. And if you don't know what that is, I'm happy to talk with you after the service. Uh, Vacation Bible School is also in your flyer. Uh, it's not too late to register. If you're an adult who wants to be involved, whether you're coming with a child or not, please register so that we can know about the food, how much food to have. Dinner is included in this, 5.30 to 7 time. 5.30, 6, yeah, 5.30, 7. 
Also in the bulletin, there is information about how to send in a photo and updated information to be in our new directory. Thanks to those who've done that already, and if you'd like to help with creating the directory, please let me know. Again, welcome.
My mic wasn't on. I hope you heard some of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, guys. Happy birthday. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for Susan and the wonderful child she is and the person you've created and continue to create. May this year be filled with joy and peace for her and an even deeper knowledge of your love for her. And we pray this for everyone having a birthday this week. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oremos. Dios omnipotente, fuente de toda sabiduría, tú conoces nuestras necesidades antes de que te pidamos y nuestra ignorancia en pedir. Ten compasión de nuestras flaquezas y danos por tu misericordia aquellas cosas que por nuestra indignidad y ceguedad no sabemos ni nos atrevemos a pedirte. Por los méritos de Jesucristo, tu Hijo, nuestro Señor, que vive y reina contigo, Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went to Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abro abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. 
and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poiled oil on top of it. He called the place Bethel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if in by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, 
but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weed among the weeds, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. 
And the slave of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in the gathering of the weeds you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather them, the wheat, into my barn. Then he, let the crowds, then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the, good ch are the children of the kingdom, and the weeds are the children of the evil one, and the evil one who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned in, with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of, of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <laughs> you gardeners out there, as you've been pulling up those weeds, you may be thinking, the evil one has put these here. Right? Yes. <laughs> Jesus' parables, his words, related to what people could understand. It was down to earth. Now, we have to rephrase a little bit sometimes because we're living in a different time, but that garden thing in the weeds, that's pretty much on. Um, where's the grace in this? I believe it is in let them grow together. It's scary to let the good and the bad grow together, but God is saying through this parable, through these words to us today, I've got your back. It's going to be okay. I've got you. When I was thinking about this sermon and this parable, The Weeds and the Wheat, I remembered this book entitled Weeds and Wheat, <laughs> subtitled Discernment, Where Prayer and Action Meet. This was written by Thomas H. Green, SJ. That means a Jesuit priest. This reminded me, and let me go to something else first. Okay, all right. So it's kind of a scary reading in a lot of ways. This was, you can, I could believe that Jesus may have said this stuff, preparing people for when he wouldn't be with them physically any longer. But I am absolutely certain that the community that created this writing about 30 some years after the Christ event was going through some stuff. Right, they're going through some stuff. It was hard being a follower of the way. It was hard doing the things that Jesus did when so many people did not want that. And this is still true, right? When we're doing the things that Jesus did, when we're being the people God has called us to be, there can be opposition. We see that. 
So I remembered this book, and then I realized this is kind of a time of anniversaries for me. Um, 10 years here at Holy Comforter, and it was 20 years ago in July 2003 that I went on my first Jesuit retreat. It's, it's a silent eight-day directed retreat, which meant I met with a spiritual director every day for around half an hour, 45 minutes, to process, to talk about what was going on in my prayer, in my prayer. Um, this was a place called the Jesuit Center for Spiritual Growth, and it was in Warnersville, Pennsylvania. The reason I'm going into all this is to bring up in my life, and I'm sure in yours, there have been important people and places that are no longer there. I went to that retreat center for many, many years until just recently, every year. It is now closed. They closed it. I mean, I'm upset, and I know people who are, like, shattered by this because it was such a place of, of love and nurture and where we connected with God in a deep way. Um, but the point has been made by the leaders who were there that, in a way, this is what retreats, and I would say spirituality in general and worship in a church is all about that we learn and we grow and we connect with God and then we go out and we are God's people in the world using all that we have gained and learned and felt and knowing how important each one of us is. That's one of the key parts actually of a Jesuit retreat and I think of what Christianity ought to be, that each of you know and that I know that each of you know how important you are to God in the world. No one can be for God in the world the way you can be for God in the world. It doesn't even matter if you believe in God or not. <laughs> You're out there doing good stuff. You're out there um, doing the things that Jesus did, bringing people together, healing people, including everyone. These are the key things, key points. So back to the gospel reading. This weed that was talked about was most likely what's known as a bearded den dendril, I believe is what it's called. And this weed back in that time, in that place, it looked pretty much exactly like wheat. It's not like it was a weed in a, in a group of beautiful plants and you could just see it and take it out. It looked the same. And it was kind of insidious, right? It, it, the way it grew up, it entwined itself around the wheat. And I read also, I learned recently that it sucked the, um, all the energy from the root. It went down into the root of the wheat too. So it was a problem. Um, and this is what people were experiencing after Jesus, after the Jesus event, after the Christ event. They had known resurrection. They had known new life. And those early followers of Jesus believed that God's reign in the sense of the end of time and experience as we know it was going to happen, like pretty quick. <laughs> um, it was coming. And when it didn't come, it was hard. And when they didn't have Jesus right there with them, it was hard. And one can imagine, and this was true also even within the community itself, there were disagreements. How could that be possible? <laughs> but there were. It's human nature, it's life, it's how every organization is. Um, and so those who put this in the Bible said this is holy scripture. Oh, and by the way, whenever you hear the words, there will be crying and gnashing of teeth, you know it's important because that's kind of scary. And so that's put in there at the end in case you weren't listening. <laughs> um, and so the leaders of the church at the time were trying to strengthen the people, just as we try to do for each other today, to strengthen the people, the people to be able to go out in the world knowing that they're going to encounter um, very close to themselves situations and people that they see as bad, as wrong, as weeds. In our world today, 
we, right, we think there are weeds, right, going on out there in the world. And the, the ones who we think are weeds, they think we're the weeds. <laughs> I'll name one weed that um, I think is a weed that others would say is wheat. But the recent decision um, in Texas by the government there to put these buoys across the river that the immigrants cross, these things are massive. They're absolutely massive and they look really scary and dangerous and if people try to cross through that situation there with those huge objects, they could easily get pulled under and drown. So I think those things are weeds. And I wish I could pluck them up right now. I wish I could take them away, but I can't. It's going to be there for at least a while. So we grow together with weeds, we're told. It's just going to be this way. It's just kind of how it is. Um, there's also, and I'd like to quote without actually quoting, but mention Natalie Boltz Weber here. Um, Nadia Boltz Weber recently put out in her blog the point that is often made and made in this book from long ago too that in each of us there's wheat and weed growing together and that by our own willpower she says and every 12-step program agrees with this uh, by our own willpower we can't save ourselves from the thing that's difficult for us or as St. Paul said last week the thing you'd rather not do and that's why all 12-step groups talk about a higher power. It doesn't have to be the Christian or Jewish or Muslim God necessarily, but that there is a higher power. And in community, we can know that because the power is known in the community as it is here. And we find strength through this power that isn't our own to live this life, to live this life. I would like to conclude with a prayer that we're going to be saying later, but it's such a good prayer, I thought it would be fun to do it now as well. This is um, the concluding prayer of the prayers of the people today. Let us pray. Oh God, we intercede for our own divided souls. Help us to trust that you are at work in every mingled heart, every conflicted community. Nourish the life you plant within us, that we might keep seeding the world with your truth and grace. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life out of love for the world. Amen. Please join me for the reading of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one another Father. Yeah of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue on our journey, let us pray with hope and trust in God. Gracious creator, sower of life, you know the complicated histories that we have carried us to this moment. You know the names of all of our generations, for you are there in each story of falling away and turning home, in our long years of wandering, and in the shining moments when we recognize your presence and find the grace to worship you. Incarnate one, all of creation is groaning. And so we dare to ask that you would come to us, be born again in this place, in the midst of our boredom, our self-congratulation, our closeted vision, startle us with the tearing, the cry, the first breath of life that will, be not, that will not be restrained. Strengthen in us the fruit of your spirit and teach us to pray. We pray for all who flee from paths by which they are haunted. We lift up all who feel abandoned by a future for which they had hoped. We plead for all who do not know that they are loved and chosen. Help us all know that we are loved and chosen. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Providence of Central Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church and the Anglican Communion and their bishops. We pray for our bishops, Mark Stevenson and Gail Harris, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, and our parish clergy, Hillary, Joe, Bridget, Heather, and Frank. In the parish cycle of prayer, Joella, Gloria, and Kath. For healing in our parish, Kathy, Maria, Carlene, Joan, Mark, Gail, Marie, the Hawes family, Bonnie, and Barbara. We pray for all who have died, especially Sarah, McFather, and we pray for all who are grieving. I invite your prayer silently or aloud. We intercede for our own divided souls. Help us to trust that you are at work in every mingled heart, every conflicted community. Nourish the life you plant within us, that we might keep seeding the world with your truth and your grace. In the name of Jesus, who gave his life out of love for the world. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
would continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3, in, with the inclusive language, um, found on page 6 in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us. A fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Carmen Coma, estes mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you, this cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Beben todos, esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, 
justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, on voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray to God, who is our divine parent, our mother, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body 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 of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of 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 Christ, the bread
body of Christ, the Lord of heaven. The body of Christ, the Lord of heaven.
stand and join me in the post-communion prayer found on page 7. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy One, in love you created us and called it good. Grant us the deep wisdom of your love that wherever this day leads, our lives may be, remain rooted in your goodness and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Comforter be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. <laughs> 